working memory. And in this chapter, I proposed um, one component of this working memory to be a domain-free central executive. And this can be thought of as a container of many different cognitive processes and functions. So, for example, interference resolution. So, what do I mean by that? So, um, a real-world example would be if you would go out uh, in the evening and you go out to the parking lot and you have to think back, where did I park my car? So maybe today you parked it in the left corner, but yesterday you parked it in the right corner. So these two memories start to interfere with each other because you don't know, wait, is it that way or is it that way? So working memory can help you to resolve these kind of, uh, of interferences. Then further examples would be um, task switching, so rapid, rapidly going back and forth between two things, or monitoring or updating information. Then besides these domain-free central executive, um, it was also assumed that there are two temporary storages, a visual storage and an auditory storage that function along with this central executive. And this assumption was mainly based on the neuropsychological finding that patients who have damage to their left hemisphere show uh, um, problems with uh, um, processing verbal material, whereas patients with damage to the right hemisphere show problems with processing um, spatial and visual material. And it was also assumed that uh, you know, these three uh, components interact with each other. So the important take-home message from, from this slide is that working memory consists of two things, a processing part and a storage part. And there have been many books written about different working memory models. So these are two covers from two books. Uh, the left one actually appeared in 1999, and it contains 12 different working memory models. And it's still the golden standard, I think, uh, today in uh, showing us what modeling approaches have been taken so far. And I do not want to dive into these 12 different models. I'm also have a little bit short of time doing that. So. Um, so that's why I just want to uh, sum it up here. What is working memory? The short answer is working memory is a cognitive system responsible for storing and manipulating task relevant information for a limited amount of time. The long answer is that from Dr. Nelson Catlin, one of the leading researchers in the working memory field. So he says working memory refers to Cognitive processes that retain information in an unusually accessible state, suitable for carrying out any task with a mental component. The task may be language comprehension or production, problem solving, decision making, or other thought. Also, I want to make the distinction between short term memory and working memory. So, working memory can be understood as short-term storage plus the ability, the ability to manipulate or work with maintained information. So working memory is a little bit more than short-term memory. And where do we find working memory at work <coughs> in our real lives? So since we are a math company, I thought I'll bring a math example here. So let's assume we multiply 13 by 50. So one way to do that would be to break this up and first calculate 10, 10 by 50, which is 500. So this was the first processing part. We calculated 10 times 50, and now we have to keep in mind 500, 500, 500, 500. And then I have to go back. Okay, what was the other part I had to do? Oh, yes, yeah, 3 times 50. So now I have to calculate 3 times 50, which is 150. And um, wait, what was the other result I had? Oh, yeah, it's 500. So then I have to, to add these two um, uh, interim results that I created in my mind. I have to add them and finally result at the final uh, output 650. 
Other examples would be uh, understanding text, for example. So I could see a, a sentence like, the, fa the father bought an apple for his daughter. And the next sentence could, could say, but she wanted to have more than only one from him. So in the second sentence, we have to know that she refers to the daughter, one refers to the apple, and him refers to the father. So there are a lot of memory processes going on. And it is assumed that working memory is dealing with all these uh, uh, problems, well, problems, things that, you know, real life actually throws at us. <coughs> Another really good example would be simultaneous interpreting. And um, a really modern example would be posting Facebook updates during a lecture like this. <laughs> so, stop. so there are certain uh, properties that researchers have identified in the past about working memory. So one thing we know is working memory capacity is limited. So there is not an indefinite amount of information that we can hold in our mind at any point in time. The next, there are individual differences in capacity. So some people have a higher capacity as others, and there are also some general trends. So on average, the older we get, it seems that our uh, capacity goes back. It's just a natural thing. And we also know that working memory Performance is very highly predicted for higher cognitive functions, for example, uh, fluid intelligence, problem solving. And we also know that working memory is predicted for scholastic achievement, so for math performance, reading, learning, and so on. And it has also been shown, at least in, in one paper, that working memory seems to be the even better predictor for literacy and numeracy <laughs> than IQ. So taking these properties and the examples that uh, I've given you before, I think it becomes clear what kind of central role working memory um, takes in our information processing um, that yeah, we use to cope with life. Okay? So it's a very central part. And um, when we draw an analogy to the to the physical domain, we could maybe say that a you know, working memory is the cardiovascular system of our brain.